All right, welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna be finalizing all the stuff on the engine. Um, first, we're gonna be doing these crusty bolts right here. They're all like dry rotted and rusty. That one. And then we're gonna do all this intercooler piping. This one comes from the turbo on the other side, maybe. And then uh, the other intercooler piping that goes down to the We actually down. have uh, Z1 replacements for those intercooler pipes. And then all these like mounts for the stuff, these solenoids, all this tubing, and then the coil packs. And uh, we're going to show you how to test it. I found in the manual how to test the uh, solenoids. You run air through them, 12 volts, all that good stuff so we can make sure they work. Uh, this bolt right here that Jonah just showed you, I'm going to show you how to make it out of uh, some just standard hardware you can get at Lowe's. And then, yep, just like you said, AC compressor, power steering, throw all that stuff together. And then what's next? Um, what's next? Put it. Put the engine in. Oh, right? yeah, put the engine in. After we finalize the engine. Um, the transmission thing. Oh, uh, yeah, we got to clearance the transmission. Yep. Yeah, so small progress, but we're getting there. So real quick, I'm going to show you how to recreate these uh, bolts. And you can do it with these small ones or these big ones, you know, obviously just change the size of the bolt that you're using. Uh, I got all these items from below. So all I'm doing is reconstructing this bolt um, using this. And I'll tell you exactly what the package says. Uh, it's a class 12.9 socket HD cap screw. It is uh, M6-1 by 25, 25 millimeters long. So you buy, you get one of these, um, and I got mine in black because I'm trying to make it match the factory stuff as close as I can. And then I got a black washer. These washers are um, flat black washers number 10. And then I also got um this sleeve right now it would have been nice to get this sleeve in like black or in steel or something like that or maybe even aluminum but i just went with whatever lowe's had on the shelf and this one they say bronze but i'm pretty sure they're brass but at least i know they're probably not going to corrode um and they should be okay so with those three things you can make the bolt right really easy so you just Slide the washer on there, and then this brass lead, you're going to have to cut it down to size. I ended up cutting a few millimeters off. Uh, here's the part that I cut off. Uh, it's like maybe like three or four millimeters. So I don't know if you see that, but you could use a Dremel, or if you've got the patience, you could sand it all off, whatever. Uh, I cut it off with a Dremel, and basically now I have a, a recreation of this bolt. The only thing that you don't have is you don't have this rubber cushion. So what I did to recreate that was I took a piece of uh, silicone line. The, this is it, the water line that came with the turbo kit. And then I just took a razor. Be real careful not to cut yourself. I tried, I kept cutting it until I got different thicknesses. You can see it took me multiple tries, but I finally got this size thickness, which is, um, you know, pretty dang good and you're not gonna see those little uh, lines from the front. So, you know, it replicates that. It's the right uh, size. It, you know, it looks better. It's not crusted. This silicone will be able to take a lot of heat. It, it won't, you know, degrade over time. And I mean, there is a difference in the threads right here. Like you're gonna have to make sure you don't over tighten this one because this one has actually the thread stop. But the money that you save, I would say, you know, this right here and again you have to find somehow find this it doesn't have to be this type of line you can use just like vacuum hose or whatever uh but i'm probably in for this bolt like three or four bucks and the uh factory or the nissan oem bolt costs i think like 30 bucks 
So saving a little bit of money still works just as good. Still looks just as good, maybe even a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna just, I'm only gonna install, I'm only gonna swap out like two or three of them, the ones that are really, really damaged. The rest I'm just gonna leave alone. So just a little tip or trick to kind of help you out, maybe save you some money. Real quick, I'm gonna show you how to test your uh, turbo solenoids so you can make sure that they're working or not. So uh, I'll put the screenshot from the service manual right here that shows you how to do this, but it's pretty simple. Um, so first you need to have a battery uh, with your positive and negative. So I just found some random wires that I have. Uh, I used a black wire for the negative and a red wire for positive or hot. So that way I know what I, you know, which ones I got here. And I just put a little connector on one so that way it stays. Now this, um, this boost solenoid is the uh, plug has been broken off, but I know that the white wire is a hot wire and the black wire is a negative. So um, that's easy, but the service manual act will actually show you that, hey, when you're holding the clip, uh, the tab is up on the top, and then the, uh, I've got it written down right here, the top wire is the positive and the bottom wire is the negative. So really easy. Um, the first thing that you can do to make sure that, well, to check that, make sure it works. So just put the, uh, uh, put one of the wires on, doesn't really matter. I'm using the hot wire in this case because I have the uh, little clip or whatever mounted to the hot wire. Um, plug that in and then take your other wire and then just tap it. And I'm not sure how good the mic's picking that up, but you'll hear a little click. So uh, the audible sound tells you that something in there is working. Um, all it does is restrict the flow from one pipe to another. So I've got this little um, vacuum line. And what I simply do, just connect it, try to blow through it. It's not going through. And then when I hook power to it, now it blows through. So that's how you know it's working. And you could even just, uh, you know, alternate, trying to blow on it. And then also, you know, turn the power on and off to check it again.
All right, so we're going to wrap up this video real quick. Uh, I didn't catch everything in a time lapse. It was really cold this morning, so I ended up um, basically not recording it and just doing a little bit of work and then hulling by the heater uh, to warm up like every five or ten minutes. Uh, but real quick, I'll show you what, what I did, and there's a lot of considerations. So if you're thinking about doing a Turbo 2 swap, I'm going to cover some things that are really important that I wish that I would have known. So first thing is, is uh, I think last night I was working on the piping that goes uh, right here. And so looking at these pipes, there's a pipe that goes this way. There's a pipe that goes here, and then there's a pipe that goes here. Um, I bought the Z1 intercooler piping kit thinking that um, it was going to come with everything I need. It does not come with everything you need. So if you're doing a twin turbo swap, you're going to have to keep, uh, you're going to have to find these still. And mine, I did have them on my motor, and but my motor was a little bit banged up. So and that's another thing I'll talk about too, if I don't forget. Uh, so I had to get new ones, well, used ones and clean them up real good and repaint them. Um, on top of that, you also have to have the piece that goes here, right? And I have one of them. It's this piece right here. It's the accordion uh, intercooler pipe, I think is what it's called. Uh, but mine has a big hole in it because it was banged up. Um, so Z1 does sell these. I don't know why they don't sell them with the intercooler kit, with the intercooler piping kit, which to me it would make sense just to sell it with it, but they don't. So that's something you got to buy separately. Make sure you remember that. Um, now looking at the kit, right? So these are the, these two pieces are the pieces that go, um, right here. Well, I was able to sort through the kit again, another like small complaint I have about the Z1, uh, intercooling kit. Like the instructions don't tell you what goes where there's eight hard pipes. There's a zillion of these things, couplers. And so it took me a little bit, but I figured out, I'm pretty sure that this goes on the, uh driver side right this setup right here and that's easy talking about uh the motor getting banged up when you are looking for a motor you're thinking about doing a twin turbo swap don't do what i did don't buy the cheapest ones you can find out there because this thing was banged up quite a bit and for everything that was bent or broken or missing uh that's going to end up costing you more money right and so I think buying a more complete motor, I wish I would have done that instead of just getting the cheapest one. So, for example, this is bent, right? I don't think I need it, but it looks it looks bad. Um, this thing, idle air control valve is right here. I've got the idle air control valve silicone hose kit from Z1, but, like, look at this thing. It's got a big dent in it right here. Um, I had to bend these back into place towards the end of the time lapse. You probably saw that. I bent these back straight. This is bent. That's bent. Um, I think I'm going to end up, honestly, taking this out, swapping it with this, because you got to remember this was a Japanese motor. The brake booster was on the right. My brake booster is going to be on the left. I need that over here. And I think maybe I can just run a bolt and cap that one off, because looking at the diagram, I don't think I need it. Um, but here, back to this thing, right? Like... I don't know. I was thinking about just getting a, an aluminum hose or something and running it from here to here, but I kind of like the idea of having the factory mounts for all the plugs. So I don't know. Maybe I'll look around and see if I can find one of these on eBay that's not all dinged up. Um, you know, there's a ton of crap that was dinged up on this motor, and it's frustrating to have to buy it all. Another thing that I did too, I want to mention is I ended up cutting off where the solenoids mount that has to do with the uh, intercooler piping kit. Forgot to mention that you have to cut these so these pipes will clear there, right? So I cut this, I cut it out here, and then I cut it out right here so the pipe will clear. That's a, one more thing to mention too. If you look at the instructions that they do have for the intercooler piping kit it you know one of the tools that you need to have is a dremel because you got a lot of cutting to do so just keep that in mind when you order that thing it's not like a one size fits all um so moving on up to the manifold you saw me throw the manifold on i have loosely attached all this stuff just to figure out like where to run hoses and all that good stuff i threw this uh uh heat shielding on there i think it's gonna do a good job 
on top of that I put uh, the coil packs in now again another thing that was missing from this motor two coil packs just up and disappeared um, so I had to order two new ones and I did not realize that they do not come with these brackets right here so I'm gonna have to get on eBay see here's one of the ones I just toss it in there and then oh, I was missing some of the bolts too so I just went and got my own hardware uh, but yeah missing that bracket uh, I was going to try to order from Z1, but apparently you can't get it from Nissan, so I'm going to have to find a used one to rob it from. Uh, that's crazy to me. That doesn't make any sense. Um, also, I put these bolts here because these bolts were missing uh, to hold down that cover. That cover is actually outside right now. I'm trying to repaint it because uh, Jonah painted it, and there was a bunch of drip and stuff on it, so we had to repaint that. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I just had this kind of sitting on here, not completely hooked up as you could see, uh, because I just kind of wanted to see how everything was going to be routed, kind of wrap my mind around it. Um, so that way, you know, I've got an idea of what it's going to look like. And oh yeah, another thing too is when it comes to the wastegates, I was going to try to run the hose that I had. It's not long enough. Um, talking to Joel from Z1. You don't need the factory solenoids, so I tested them in the beginning of this video for no reason. You get rid of those, but what you do do is you have to run an equal length um, hose from this one to the other one on the other side and then put a T in it and then put that to your boost controller. Um, and I just didn't have enough hose because this hose was uh, too short. So had to order some more hose. Uh, once that hose comes, I'll finish running that. All right, so that's everything for this video. I think at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a bag on this motor so it doesn't get dusty because uh, who, who knows how long it's going to take for me to finish up the rest of the work. And I'm going to move on to cleaning up the AC lines, put some of the wire harnesses back into the car, the ECU, all that stuff. So that way um, I can go ahead and drop this motor back in. So if you want to see how this thing turns out, um, please make sure to subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you in the next one.